Yes, yes, yes. Yes, Joe. We're back for another go. We're back. Look, we're going to show you something, but you can't tell anybody. <laughs> that's weird. That's the magic words I wanted to hear. Guess what I had last night? That's mega, Joe. That's mega. Wow. Yeah, look at them scales. <laughs> I felt the line pulling tight in my hand as I was petting. Yeehaw. Yeehaw, brother. Thought they're new on the, on the lake, that comes on, I'll catch it. Yeah, give it a go if you haven't before, and uh, hopefully you'll catch a few fish on it. Bang, I'm now catching fish. Oh, blimey. Shaking, buzzing. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about, mate. <laughs> Wicked. Well done, brother. Cheers, mate. Man on a mission. Can be done. Let's do this. So far, so good. Yo, 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 welcome to the December issue of Carp Angle. Oh, I cannot believe how quickly this year's flown by. Nearly two years it's been going now. Madness. Anyway, for this month's main piece, we're back out on the bank with Ollie Davies, which is always an absolute pleasure. And we thought we'd set ourselves a little challenge. Now, neither of us are the kind of angler that likes to sit behind three static rods trying to make it happen. We'd rather get around the pond and try and create some opportunities. So, I thought we'd go to Thorny Weir, which is a mega day ticket complex, three different lakes there, and we thought we'd set ourselves a challenge of catching one fish from every lake on the complex. Now, I actually forgot to do an intro at the time in the car park, we're obviously far too excited. So this is your intro now, and you'll join us at the lakes looking for some carp. Enjoy the show. Yeah, this one's got a little bit more depth. Uh, looking for two or three foot. I mean, in that bay behind us, it's really shallow in the snags and it doesn't look like they'd be sitting there. Want to find a couple in the edge, Joe, rather than have to fish them out in the middle. It's really weedy. Um, we could waste a lot of time looking for spots, couldn't we? I'd rather be able to see them. But like looking down, you can sort of see what it's going to be like. I almost wish I had the camera on the front of the pole. Yeah, over when it's shallow and clear, it's like perfect. I'm, I'm an old school polar. I haven't got all that technology, but some of the lads at Horton have got the cameras on the front of them, like the fish spies and... That's the ultimate edge, isn't it? Mate, for this sort of fishing, um, yeah, I mean, like, the, look, there's a couple of clear spots down here and they're no more than like a foot, a foot square. Casting a rig on that, I mean, I don't care how accurate you are, you ain't casting it on that, like, you just ain't. If you are, you deserve to be doing this filming instead of me. That's been cleaned by carp, isn't it? 100%, more yeah. Re more recently as well. Obviously come through here, don't they, a little channel. Yeah. Oh, right, that's the potential for a night, do you know what I mean, to do the night. I wouldn't want to sort of sit here all day with my rigs there, but after dark, you could quite easily pole them right tight to this, couldn't you, from the, from the swim there. Uh, so this is maybe an option for tonight, or one, one night anyway. Proper old Colm Valley feature this, isn't it, mate? Proper, yeah. What's it, an old dredger barge old or something? Old dredger, yeah, there's a couple of them here next to each other. I mean, they're quite well known on this lake, aren't they? They've been here, well, <laughs> 30, 40 years by the looks of it. Bit of history, isn't it? Definitely. It's quite a cool day to get lake, isn't it, that you can actually climb up on here. Like, some places would be like, no! can't do, can't get on there, can't do this, can't do that. But actually Dave's quite laissez faire, isn't he? You know, he's got sensible rules with barbless hooks and unattended rods and that. But actually, yeah, I like this. I'll bear that in mind for later. There's an out of bounds sign here in a, like a well-used walk-in rat run, which says to me that there's going to be fish here regularly. A little bit shallow to find them in this part of the lake at the moment. Do you know what though, Joe? Like, look, you can see where they've eaten the, you can see where they've eaten it away over the years, but they actually haven't been here recently. There's like loads of detritus, the bottom's not clear. They give it away, didn't they, when they, they visit an area. Such key information, isn't it? It is, bruv, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, like, you're not just looking for fish, you're looking for where they've been recently. Um, and they haven't been here, so, 
funny, isn't it? And you know what? It's going to be tricky to get to from that swim as well. Anything that's hard for people to get to is always worth a look. Well, that was a fish, wasn't it, mate? Yeah, I look. Oh, maybe, maybe not. Cool. How did that make so much of a disturbance? No, I think that was a carp, mate. Must have been. I must think have. it was, yeah. The way they freaked out and look at them all looking like. Something's just fizzed, fizzed up like right under my feet there. They got a trickle coming in here, ain't you? Yeah, you've got a little bit of inflow, ain't you? This actually looks like quite an interesting little fish. I can imagine them just being up close in front of this one. I totally missed that inflow on the way past. Yeah, no, I thought it was actually flowing out. There was a, I see the pipe over there, but it's actually flowing in. This is one of them areas you can imagine really gets ignored. Right. You're not fishing open water. You're not fishing snags, really. Like There's no features, but... If it's deep in front of you, you can imagine them being, you know, being quite happy here. The only thing that puts me off is this army of black chickens out here. Look at them. Yeah, I bet it's really noisy at night. Really noisy. And I expect you're going to have to put up with getting picked up a fair bit. This swim interests me, Joe. This is the sort of one that you could sort of just drop a couple of rods in. Yeah, I bet it's a good night zone. That's what I mean. Like, I'm sort of looking for somewhere here now to maybe just drop in for the night. Um, somewhere where the fish might not be now, but where they, they might turn up. So those little snaggy bits that are too shallow now. Uh, look, 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 look. That's a fizzer, isn't it? Got a bit, isn't it? I mean, it's less than 10 yards from the bank. What's that, seven yards from the bank? Does it look like there's a bit of depth there? Yeah? It does look like there's a bit of depth, yeah. Oh, it's definitely a fish, that is. It's got to be, isn't it? It's got to be, look at it. Well, look, if we don't see anything on our rounds, I'll be straight back here with a rod just to give it up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look, look, at the, look at the tail yeah. pattern. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is good. We've, set, we've definitely found some fish. Feeding fish as well. And yeah, maybe feeding as yeah, well. Look at it. Yeah, definitely. Look, tail, vortexes, fizzing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do we do? Go get the gear? Oh, I reckon, isn't it? So, let's have a quick look at Lake Free. Quick look, but like this is a good chance. So there's, uh, there's a few fish down here, like tight, tight, tight under the bank. And you can see they spend a lot of time here. It's kind of eaten away. That's quite a decent one, that is. Um, you can't get to them. You can't get within two rod lengths of them, but good one for a night time, isn't it? You know, if you can get a bait on the edge of that, you'd expect them to come out. 100% mate, yeah. It's, I bet there's loads along here, but you just can't see into the edge. It looks like there's at least like five. Like, they obviously spend a lot of time here. But like I can see off the edge of the snag, it's, um, it's quite a lot of weed. I think you'd have to fish it from the swim to the left though. Come on in that way, isn't there? Whoa, nearly. <laughs> Well, this little bit's ruined, isn't it, Joe? <laughs> Never getting a bite over that. I see it quite a lot at Horton, where people don't do a great deal of margin fishing. And for me, if you're putting whole boilies in the margin, you don't do a lot of margin fishing. It's really not the one. It scares them. Like any lake where they fish for a lot, that sort of really visible, bed around balls scares them. And it's not like, when you say to people, they look at you like you're mad. like. Like you're, like you're actually sort of telling them off for using boiler, boilies, like, my boilies are brilliant, I catch those. Nah, just break them up. It's like how you apply them. This has got to be, what, 100, 150 boilies in the edge down there? 12 millers, yeah. I mean, if I was a carpenter, I, 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 don't, think, I don't think that's going to get eaten by a um, fish at all. I think the birds will clear that up. Or it'll go mouldy. Or it'll go mouldy, yeah. Shame, but like, I don't know, it looks like it would do a bite, that spot. It looks fairly clear, doesn't it? But not with that bait on it.
and one or two nets. Nice lake, isn't it, Ollie? It's a lovely lake, mate. I've never fished it. I walked around it when I had a ticket for the river, lapped it a couple of times. I think back then it had less fishing. Um, seems to have a few more in these days, but yeah, it's a lovely lake, isn't it? Another proper old school Cone Valley carp lake. I mean, there's yeah. so many good lakes in this part of the world, isn't there? And it's not like these new modern day ticket lakes that are just, you know, holes in the ground, is it? You've got every feature you could Mine, wish Minecraft, for. my first carp lake. <laughs> there's a few of those in there. But don't get me wrong, they've got their place, haven't they? But these old gravel pits, yeah, lovely. You learn so much more as well, don't Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Know, the variety of fishing, the variety of features, you know, you've got your snag fishing, your spot fishing, your weed fishing, great float waters, isn't they, as well, a lot of the time? Yeah, I'd love to find something fizzing somewhere. Oh, Lake Frey. Another little gem. This is a lovely little lake as well, isn't it, Joe? I it wasn't open when I, uh, when I was fishing on the river. You could just sort of see a glimpse of it through the trees. Um, I don't know, wasn't like aware that it had any fish in it at that, at that point, but. Yeah, I think it was 2017 it got opened up and a guy called Birdie was having a proper little go on here and he had a mega 37 mirror, uh, but also filmed a really big carp. Um, yeah, you just showed me the video. It looks it looks massive, looks massive it? yeah, yeah. Um, well, it's nice that there's a little bit of unknown still, isn't there? You know, even in this bit of the valley, which is so well known. By all accounts, because, you know, it is a little sort of small weedy lake and this is kind of like the overflow, if you like, I think most people tend to choose the other two lakes in preference. So it doesn't get a huge amount of pressure from what I can gather. No, and a lot of it's inaccessible, isn't it? Uh, you can only fish from one bank, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think there's uh, three or four swims maybe along this bank. It would be really nice to see a little bit of fizz in here. But There's some crackers in here as well, though. The ones that they've put in are sort of hitting 30 pounds and they're nice and dark and scaly. And yeah, it's a cool little pit, man. At the moment, though, I think the best chance is looking like that. Well, yeah, you've got to get a rod on that, mate. Yeah, that was, I, uh... I think um, as much as like, I'd really like to have a proper good look around, I think there is an opportunity to maybe get a quick bite there. We've got time, haven't we? Yeah, yeah, we've got a couple of days. So, I mean, for me, that's an eternity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two days fishing, fantastic. With three lakes to go at, loads of options. Exciting stuff. Exciting stuff indeed. Is that bubbles or weed? Uh, there's so much floating weed on here, it's, it's actually a little bit tricky to see. Okay, let's keep going. Ah, got proper thin trackies on, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but there's a few fish down there. Some good ones as well, aren't there? Yeah, they look decent. One thing that sort of is against this, Joe, is they look pretty torpid though, man. They're not moving a lot. They just sat there like sardines, didn't they? But where we have just been, there's definitely there's feeding. There's definitely feeding, yeah. There's at least one fish feeding. So I think without further ado, it's time to get the gear out of the motor. We've already spent longer than most would, haven't we, uh, looking, but we're setting up on fish, 100%. 100%, no guesswork. What did you just call this? Oh, well, I was saying it, it's possible to ship one over with the pole. Um, I mean, you're going over a bit of a weed bed, line lay ain't going to be great. It's the belly of the beast, isn't it? <laughs> but like, they're down here quite happily. I can see three or four different ones. I can't see any giants, but that one's a 20 pounder. They're tucked right tight under the bank. Oh, there's quite a few, Joe. I reckon there's at least 10 down here. Yeah, and that's just what we can see in this bit. That down to the right there, we can't see in there. <sighs> okay, well, that's uh, enough looking at them. Let's try and catch one, Joe. Sweet. <laughs> Sweet, that's the magic words I wanted to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Stop fucking about and get a rod out. <laughs> Even without the glasses, I could see that one. Just swimming out in the open water. There's a real nice clear spot there, isn't there, Joe? Yeah, there's a couple of humps out there, isn't there? Um, they shallow. You've got to think that 
those fish are going to come out, aren't they, and, uh, and have a feed. The only thing that I'm worried about is that uh, this is a swim with all the boilies in the margin. So like the obvious feature is probably likely to have uh, bait on it as well. It's true that, mate. I think like we were just talking earlier, you and I, Joe, both the same. We were kind of looking for areas which other anglers ain't necessarily going to put a bait in or that are less than obvious. Um, so like just down this margin, it's possible to get a rig right tight to them trees. Definitely one of us has got to do that. In a way, it's kind of like a way of cheating all the you know, standard bite times and what have you, isn't it? That's right, know? yeah, yeah. I mean, at the moment, like all those fish are tucked up right tight under the snags. And, you know, I think these guys who've got their rods out in the middle of the lake, they've got no chance for bite now. They've got no chance. There are fish feeding, but they're feeding in a, a weird area that, like, most people probably wouldn't even look, let alone put a bait in. Again, this time of year is classic for that, isn't it? Absolutely. Harvesting absolutely. areas that they wouldn't normally go in. But it's in this same sort of corner where there's, there's obviously a few fish in this part of the lake. The opposite corner where it looks really, really good. Um, it's quite shallow and I don't think there's anything there at the moment. Looks like they're here. So, like, number one thing is location, isn't it? If you're not on them. Anyway, enough talk, let's go. I mean, it's so close to the bank. Is it even carp? Are there tension here? Big roach? I don't know, mate, but them vortexes. The vortex is yeah for sure. Uh, there's another, another few the bubbles Bosch. there. The big Bosch that gave us the area away in the first place. Yeah. I mean, I don't think we would have even stopped and paid it much attention, probably like everybody else, had it not been for the, the fish. Oh, mate, that is, surely that's got to be a carp down there. I mean, it's five yards from the bank, seven yards from where I'm sat now. I mean, it could be It's got to be, it's got to be. Look at it. Could be chock a block with weed, couldn't it? It could be chocker, but like normally when they're sending up that kind of fizzing, it's over just like a, a silty, cleanish bottom. There might be a little bit of weed laid on the bottom, but I wouldn't expect that to be in a in a big thick patch of it. Okay, the only way to find out is to just to stick two rods out there, isn't it? Isn't it? And it's really, really simple. It's seven yards out. It's going to be a little uh, easy ship out with the pole. It looks like it's quite shallow, but. Do you know what? There's so many coots around here, I don't think it'll make any difference to Paul. I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect him to be too freaked out by it. Let's do it. As I'm setting up, I'll try and keep my eyes on the water as well. And like, There's one down here, definitely, but see if there's any more in the area. Just don't know how, um, how weedy it is, I would assume, looking at the rest of the lake. But... Oh, yo, stop worrying about later, mate. This is half hour in the bag. You've got this. Oh, I don't know, like, it's funny, isn't it? Like, it's all, it is all about the now, but I still find myself um, trying to think tactically. But, yeah. How many pole sections are we going to need? Five? Seven? Not loads. No, that's pretty easy, is not it? For you. What's the maximum distance you've pulled out there? Um, 80, 80 metres. <laughs> um, but then I also waded another 20 metres, so I was probably fishing over 100. <laughs> <laughs> Got a bite as well. Uh, yeah, there's another video uh, coming on Nash TV soon where the lake's over 300 acres. I, I've had a few people say to me, oh, I'd love to see you use that on a proper lake. Well, I had a double take for uh, nearly 100 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Spoil uh, spoiler alert. two out, I'm going to go and have a little look down that margin. Yeah, mate. See what the crack is, maybe put a handful of maggots in. 
first. But yeah, I won't be far away. Well, I'm just up from Ollie and the plan was to stick one across to the tree line because it looks like that's one of their sort of safe zones, if you like, really. There's a lot of fish over there. And it is possible to pull one over because Ollie's here and Ollie's got his pole and he wasn't stupid enough to leave his at home. But... You can chucked. see it in the shot, Joe. I can see him bubbling as you're talking. They're literally sheeting up there. Um, so what's the point in putting one right over there, fishing against snags and locked up? You know, it's a bit hairy, but you do it if you had to. But look, 10 yards out, how ripping it up. He's just stuck his nut out as well. So yeah, just a little solid bag, tiny little bit of ground bait in the bottom, a few maggots, a few casters, but hardly anything really, because uh, they're there, they're feeding. Enough for a bite, hopefully. Obviously, the first time we went out of Ollie was the first time I'd seen one of these in use. And since then, I've uh, grown to absolutely love it. My for, for that style of angling, Joe, where you're after a quick bite, it, it changes the game, really, doesn't it? Especially with me with my blooming solid bags, because they are just not very stealthy at all, are they? Right. Oh, what's that? It's going underneath it. Schoolboy error there, Ollie. That's right, I can just do it like that. Big liner. Or is it, or is it a bream? Well, I thought I was going there, mate. So did I. It's kind of settled back down again. Oh, they're up and down this bank, aren't they? Chicken, it must be fish. God, they're noisy, aren't they, mate? Proper noisy, at least they're back. <laughs> I think I scared them all off with the old bushwhacker earlier. <laughs> Cormac's gone, haven't they? Look, they've just all disappeared. Oh, yeah. Flown home to roost. Well, no sign of a quick bite yet, but um, we're in the right area, aren't we, mate? Sort of been, been on fish in the last, well, all afternoon. Yeah, there's, um, there's certainly a few. Boil there, just sort of 20 yards out. Yeah, yeah. And there. Well, you're, you're definitely on fish. Having said that, one's just gone over in front of me, hasn't it? Yeah. I think they're just steaming about. Just Quite active, aren't they? Waiting for them little sort of um, windows of sort of feeding activity, I guess. Well, there's definitely been feeding activity, hasn't there? I you know, there's one coming across the surface now. 100%. I mean, when we got here, there was quite a few fizzers, weren't there? Um, and this, I mean, I, that rod on that snag, that's, I can't believe that ain't gone, really. No, there's quite a few fish in there, isn't there? Getting liners on it. It's just that line angle, isn't it? The line lay of it going over that weed and straight down. It's not ideal, is it? Horrendous, really. But it's in the right area, it's in amongst them. Uh, there's maggots on there, and I sort of wound them up with a few maggots to start with, so... Oh, they were definitely um, interested. So I, I walked around there and it was a bit coloured up and they were scooting about, so... Yeah, and I, I, well, I see a massive common in this corner. Well, I presume it was a common. It was so dark, I couldn't really see any markings on yeah. it. But maybe even a 40-pounder, you know? Well, I saw a decent one that was a mirror, so, you know, there's obviously more than one good fish in this corner, isn't there? Well, even the ones we've seen, you know, I've got good clean sightings of lumping out. There's been like, a good couple of 30s, isn't there? And a good sort of average 20 plus, isn't it? Oh, they're not small carp. I, you know, they're not even like small 20s, Joe. I think they're kind of up there, yeah. close to 30 pound. Well, you can imagine how much food they get fed. <laughs> yeah. Throughout the, the year. The lake's like not busy, but is it, there are a few anglers on for a Monday. It's, um, I reckon it must be about 10 on now. There's a few walking around with buckets earlier. So what do you reckon then, mate? We'll uh, 
give it a go here for the evening and the night, set up for the night. Well, location's everything, isn't it, Joe? And they're here, and certainly that snag rod, that's a, I think that's a guaranteed bite. It's not a question of if, it's just a question of when. Um, so as much as, I don't know, I've, I'm not super confident where I am, but I feel like um, between us, there's so many fish about, we've got to nick a bite, haven't we? And you know, I think even if um, if you get one off that snag rod, we'll, we'll go, wouldn't we? I think go That's over. Um... Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've got so much water to explore, haven't we? It's quite exciting, isn't it? Oh, go on in. Oh, oh, oh! Oh, this rod's just got me on edge constantly. It's <laughs> bouncing away there. Go on in. I can't believe it hasn't gone, Joe. It's crazy, isn't it? Like you say, you know, they they probably know it's there. They're just doing their best to feed around it. Not get hooked. Is that fish over that shallow spot? I'm sure it is, mate. Right where I just dropped that rig. Look, look. Good oh, one yeah. as well. Big that's dark, big dark, big dark shape. shape. I mean, look, that's moving slow over there as well. That's massive. Is that over the spot? That's got to be it. That could look. be that one I see in here, mate. That's huge. Yeah, look, that looks like it could be feeding as well. Can you see it? It's just mooching. Look, yeah. it's just turned around and come back the other way. 40 yards out, but I mean, a lot of people wouldn't see that, would they? You know? no. Unless you've got your eyes on the water and you're fully like zoned out. He's still there, yeah, Joe. Look, look, he's come there. back, he's come in a circle. He's going over the spot, man. I'm actually poaching Joe's swim up. I've just shipped a rod. Um, nothing's happening next door, so I've brought mine in and I've shipped one out on this sort of shallow area where we see a fish um, like boiling and he, he jumped as well, didn't he? About 20 minutes ago. Just waiting for that line to shoot up now. Oh, it's exciting. Like, it's, it's actually exciting. I'm buzzing. Like One of them rods could go at any moment. Is that another one on the left-hand side as well? Yeah, yeah, there's fish over that spot now. I mean, and that, that went down in about two feet of water and it, it went down and bang. Like, that's clear and fishing. <sighs> Come on. It's on, mate. It's on. We could be out of here in no time. We could have something special in the net. You know, really... oh, that comment that you showed me, um, you what's at me. <sighs> That was a nice one, that day, wasn't it? 40 plus, yeah. Is it really? Yeah. Yeah, a really special one. There what you go. We're here in this corner. The buzz is on, though. The buzz is on. <laughs> big cart buzz. Cool. That was a big one in front of Ollie. Just boshed out, literally about 20 yards out. Um, oh, these fish have just had me on edge for the last, well, a couple of hours, I think, now. I dropped a rig with a bag across to that tree line and the line's going over a weed and going down to the spot, so it's a real bad line though. It's um, you know, sort of a tight line, obviously it's fishing across to a snag, so anyway, I'm just getting liners constantly and I just thinking if I put too many maggots in the scoop or has the rig been moved about and now it's not fishing, do I just need to sit on my hands? Oh, oh, oh is it? There we are. Oh, no. Oh. What? Oh, that was a proper pull, that one. Oh, my God. I don't know handle much more of this. Well, I didn't pull out of the clip, but it did move it a bit. Unless it just tightened up that bow. But, um, yeah. Stressful. Go on, then. Just need it to crank round, put out that clip. I'll be on it. Hopefully it'll come into a bit of weed, get a bit of weed around its head, and I'll just drag in the weed bed with a massive great carp in it. That's the plan, can't we stick to that? Come on, get on that hook. Well, took a little bit of waiting, sitting on my hands, going through hell, to be honest with you. Constant liners, I was questioning the rig, questioning the bait, <laughs> questioning everything like you do, and, uh, yeah, it's just, well, it kind of dropped back a bit, actually. It kind of cranked up and then dropped back. And I can see it's dropping back, so, yeah, bent into it. It's kited to the left, which we were talking about with Ollie, and we said if it goes left, it could get hairy. <laughs> and I think, thankfully, it's the weed that slowed him up a bit, but the weed's not helping at the moment because it's not attached to the fish. So it's just getting in the way more than helping me out. But hopefully... We can get them both in. Might have to be a little hand line job, mightn't it? There's a fair way past it. Oh, yeah. 
I'm using my hand here just because I can feel everything a bit better. There we go. There we go. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Wicked. I don't know. <laughs> oh, blimey. Shaking. Buzzing. Mind that dead eel, or whatever that is. Horror in the margins. Wicked. Oh, there we go, losing light now, but just about to get away with that cracking mirror. A few lovely little scales down the side of it. Nice long one as well, you know, well proportioned, quite wide across the back. Really good mouth on it. <sighs> Absolute buzz. Sun is just literally just setting as we speak. So um, I guess we're going to stick to the plan, get this back and uh, go and see if we can find some other opportunities elsewhere. What are you saying, Al? No, I'm tempted to stay the night. We've just jumped, Joe. He's tempted to stay the night. Right. He's tempted. Well, what we're going to do, wander around in the dark and drop in the weed? Well, we'll keep you posted, <laughs> whatever we get up to anyway. But yeah, major result. Buzzing. Definitely mid-20, that. It's got some weight to him. Well done, mate. Sorry, I just did the classic double record then. <laughs> I thought I was re recording the release and I've ended up, oh, what a noddy. Never mind. Anyway, um, yeah, cheers, mate. Very enjoyable to be out with you, having a bit of fun fishing rather than, you know, like, oh, I just said it with a bit that we've deleted, or sorry, that didn't get recorded, but, um, you know, it's a lot of our fishing, it's quite serious, it's, you know, it's for ourselves, but when you come out, somewhere you don't normally fish on a bit of a challenge it's nice to kind of just enjoy a bit of fishing with someone else isn't it mate you know oh, mate, it's definitely a team effort uh, well there's, carp. we've got two other lakes and hell of a lot of water and hell of a lot of carp so uh and a little well, bit of time mate, ahead of us i'd be like more tempted to i don't know i'm surprised like, at you actually well i'm gonna really go <laughs> and get some heat and then like maybe the reset button will be fresh but Cool. All right. Well, I'm happy here because I've seen a massive Mate, one in that corner. Jumping, literally, as we were doing the pictures, there's, bigger. there's still fish about. Um, Ultimately, like the others, they're, they're busy where you sort of want to be, aren't they? And like the little lake, maybe we need to bait that. Yeah, and maybe we're probably going to need more daylight. So yeah. All right. Let's sit out here tonight. See if we can get ourselves a bigger one. Well, they're, they're definitely bigger ones here, isn't there? And then uh, tomorrow morning we'll go and get eyes on the pond over there. Sweet. what I had last night. Eight hours sleep. Lovely sleep, really needed that. Um, but yeah, I think, I think the fish probably moved out of this area in the evening. Um, they did, there was the odd one showing sort of after dark. Ollie had the odd one in front of him. He didn't get his rods out until about 10, 10 o'clock, something like that. Um, but I've not even had a single bleak down here. I have got one on a little spot just down to the left here, and it's a lovely little gravel spot. Um, there's an inflow from the river, and it just looks like the sort of spot that would get visited every night. Um, and I honestly would have put money on that rod going at some point during the hours of darkness, but it hasn't, so I was very wrong there. 
Um, I think the fish were probably in this area yesterday because there was no pressure here. But obviously we've created a bit of pressure now and I don't know, they might turn back up this morning but ideally I want to get over on one of the other ponds and um, yeah, try and sort of up the chances of getting one over there because obviously daylight hours, eyes need to be in as many places as possible to try and locate the fish um, after having a look at them lakes yesterday. I think it's actually going to be pretty tricky. So, yeah, we've got quite a lot of water to cover today and still quite a bit of a mission ahead of us to try and complete. So, I'm going to start getting packed up here, get everything on the barrow. Um, hopefully Ollie's going to catch one. Soon. <laughs> right, more coffee is required. So, we've come over to the mighty Mets. Yeah, um, a change of scene this morning. Wasn't much going on in that corner, was there, Joe? No, I think That it's... bite at last light, I think, cleared them all out. And uh, yeah, it was really quiet. Not a lot of activity. So yeah, we've come over the Mets. First little look round, really. We didn't have a proper look yesterday, did we? No, I just sort of stopped in a couple of little bits, but yeah, it's a lovely lake, isn't it? It is. There are a few on. Um, it's not rammed, but the choice is a little bit restricted. Um, yeah, let's find some carp, eh? It looks like there's maybe something down here, this sort of first little viewing hole that we've come into. I don't think you can fish here, and I'm, I'm struggling to work out how you would anyway, um, what swim gives you an angle to it, but typical, <laughs> always the way, where you can't fish from, there's fish. But, uh, yeah, let's keep going. <laughs> some fish out. We found some fish. I mean, I did see one jump on the Mets, but that was right at the furthest end of the lake in the snaggiest, snaggy corner. Um, didn't see anything else really worth going on. Um, so we've walked around Lake Three, and lo and behold, there's a couple of fish visible. I mean, it's quite shallow. The, the light's better than it was yesterday, isn't it? We came around here and we couldn't see any of this. Um, but yeah, I can sort of see the bottom over a lot of it. I've just watched two fish cruise in and they've just started fizzing. Um, right. There's been a couple of other little bits of fizzing. Someone's obviously spent time in here. There's a lot of weed been cleared. Um, but yeah, there's a few fish about and it looks like they're coming in and out of here fairly regularly and that's all I want. I just want to be able to drop onto fish. Trouble with the Mets there, could be miles from them, couldn't you? Mm. And it sounds like, you know, like this swim behind us that does the most amount of bites is tucking them right in the back of snags, isn't it? It's not like they... I mean, I'm actually, the guy, when we came over the bridge, he had one out in open water, didn't he? Like, he had done, yeah. I mean, you know, it has done the odd bite, but it's just a little bit random for me. I, I want something to go on, and here there's something to go on. 100%, mate. What about you? Next um, door, you've seen a little bit as well, haven't you? There was a little bit of fizzing, just literally about three rod lengths out. It looks quite deep there as well. It looks like it dropped. Do you know what? That actually looks the better swim. Typically, I've probably shot my bolt too early again, but um, it's got you've got a nice plateau there, haven't you? Well, no, I thought I'd leave that one in between us 
Oh, have and you gone even, you the have you gone even so further? You shit one out for yeah, look, if you look at that to... look, big sheet there. A big sheet. I mean, it's sometimes hard to get a bite. It's obviously soft down there. There's obviously a lot of weed. But I'm going to put a little bit of foam on the hook link and just drop it on the fizzers, man. What's the plan with this one then, huh? Um, so I'm dropping it on some fizzers there. It's definitely weedy out there, Joe. Um, but I don't want to drop it with a foam nugget on it. I will use foam nuggets, but if I'm dropping it on a feeding fish, I don't want that big white thing flying past its face as it pops off. But Cole Valley, trains, planes and automobiles. So noisy, so noisy, but fishing's good, so we put up with it. That's it. And I'm waiting for another target, mate. Yeah. Yeah, I, I want to actually drop it like right on where it fit, it's fizzing. Chances are that'll be semi-presentable. or at least where that fizzing was. If there's one or two residual bubbles just to aim at, it's about, I've just added another two pole sections. I don't think it's any further than that. See that, there was a little blip just behind the spoon there. Oh, there we go, there he is. Oh, I've got a target now right in front of that weed. right up to the plateau area there. Didn't come up over the bait, but came to the edge of the clear spot and then carried on back over the weed. They're definitely um, sort of not in a feeding mood, are they? But, what are you thinking there, mate? Well, I think yeah, he's going over that other spot as well. I can see him swimming quite fast. Um, I'm thinking that this will be a good bet for the night, but I don't think I'm going to get one now. Like, the way they're behaving, um, this is one for a for tomorrow morning maybe, or early hours. Um, but it feels like I should have time to nick a bite somewhere else. I don't know, I'd love to go and check that snag again, Joe. See if they're back in there. I mean, I think you'd be crazy not to really with the size of some of the fish that were in there yesterday. Yeah, and, um, I mean, and you're just minding me at the moment, really. Like, it feels like you're wasting your uh, well, no, prodigious I mean, talent, my friend. If you're, coming <laughs> over, if you're going over there and they're in there, then I'll, I'll come over with you. Um, it's yeah. got, you know, that's like a guaranteed bite, I think. If you can get one on the edge of that while they're in there. Yeah. It might take, you know, might take a few hours, but... Yeah. I don't know, this there's fish here. I'd be confident doing a night here, but I just don't think I'm going to get a bite in the next couple of hours, so... That's it. I think, like I say, on the whole complex from what we've seen, best chance of a quick bite and a chance of a good one at the moment is back where we were. And you know what? Like, I know we want to catch one out of all of them, but you've just got to go where the bites are with this kind of fishing. And at the moment, it looks like if we can find a little snaggy corner. I mean, mate, he's going tomorrow in the sort of uh, dolly hole on the Mets. We could do an extra night, Joe. Yeah. Yeah. We've and still we've got, got time. And we've got it a pole. Over yet, he's, not, he's not fishing in the belly of the beast either. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's go and find some carp, Joe. Yeah, mate, sweet. The plan was to fish on Lake Free with one rod next door to Wally and then two rods behind on the Mets. But after having a little flick around on the Mets, it was really shallow, super shallow, really uninspiring. Hadn't seen anything up there at all. And as much as it would have been nice to have a chill out and a little social with Ollie, we're here on a mission and we want to try and you know, complete the mission and reach our target. So 
um, without anything else to go on on the Mets because I've been looking a lot today and haven't seen, well, anything really. Um, I've gone on the information from Birdie, my mate, who's fished here quite a bit in the past, and he said this area out here, well, these snags to the right, um, the fish like to get in there and into the ones to the left here, and he said there's you know, some bars out there where they kind of come in and out of this area in the past there. So, um, yeah, he said it's a, an area worth investigating anyway, because he's done well here in the past. So with nothing else to go on at all, I thought, okay, yeah, I'm going to mission it up there and um, fish there for the night. And obviously I've got a view of a different bit of water from the other end. And yeah, obviously if I can catch one out of here tonight, and Ollie can catch one out of the little lake, then we've completed the challenge. So I've come up here, I've had a little flick around with the uh, uh, lead, just like a two ounce lead, and Basically, found the areas talking about. There's a couple of different bars out there and some smooth areas in amongst them. So, found one of those smooth areas, and there's like literally like the, the sediment that you're pulling in, the little silky bits of weed are full of. It's like a bloodworm, but it's it's lighter in colour, sort of green rather than a red. Um, so yeah, it's full of it. So, loads of food out there. Got the features, you know, which are probably their roadways which they use. So I'm going to get some maggots, some hemp, and some casters on that spot and then probably I don't know about yeah six six small spoms worth and two rods over that and then actually whilst I was doing that I noticed a bit of fizzing out to the left and um, thought well, I'll keep my eye on that and then there was a, a sort of movement you know sort of not a bow wave but you could see there was a fish under the surface um, just out to the left here so I thought I'm going to take a gamble, I'm going to stick a little bag on his head. So I made a little solid bag with a two ounce lead in it, and sort of, you know, so I wouldn't bomb the water quite as much and hopefully it would sort of sink down a bit slower and plops that right next to him and he's literally still feeding now. So hopefully I've got enough presentation on that to get a bite. You never know, it could happen before the sun goes down. Ooh, buzzing. I'm a bit reluctant to put this bomb mix out at the moment because of him there. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to get everything wrapped up, get my rigs knocked up and um, just get ready, really, because at the moment I think there's a chance on that rod. So to be bombing it up out here would probably be a little bit foolish. But Ollie's happy enough. He's gone to go and get his rods out on the little lake. And, uh, yeah, fingers crossed we can pull this off. Not enough hours in the day at this time of year, is it? Um, still activity out to the left here. I took a gamble and put four spawns out on that area straight out, and it doesn't seem to have bothered them. They must be in a little feeding frenzy there, obviously on naturals. I say I did just sling a bag in there, so I might not have the best presentation, but um, yeah, you have to take a little gamble sometimes, don't you? It was a bit of a gamble even casting to it in the first place. Definitely think the naturals could be the edge though. I think this time of year they can get so preoccupied by them because they're just going around harvesting what they can while it's still available or whilst it's becoming available under new weed beds that have just um, you know, died away or been ripped off and drifted off. But yeah, all right, let's get this one out there. He's on the money. Two casts, both of them exactly where they needed to be. I'm telling you now, this setup's got carp written all over it. It's happening. It is definitely happening. We're having one. We're having one. All right, shush now. Shush. What's occurring? 
Oh, I'll tell you what's occurring. Not much. Well, it's now like 11 o'clock in the morning. I've not had a liner since before it got light. I've not seen any signs. It's been cold, cold easterly. Um, I've just kind of been hoping that once it warms up a bit, the fish will move out of them snags and onto that shallow area again like they were yesterday. But, I don't know, it's a different day, a very different day. And obviously I probably did spook them a little bit yesterday, so... <sighs> I don't know what to do really. I've, um, I could do tonight, but I'm going to Wales first thing uh, Friday morning. I've still got a few things I need to organise for that. And yeah, I will be pushing it a bit. And also it's going to tip down tonight, so I'm going to end up going home with soaking wet gear and stinking the car out, which my girlfriend's not going to be best pleased about driving in five, for five hours. Um, but I feel like you know I should be able to get a bite out of this swim. There was fish out here last night. I had liners. I've just got a feeling that they weren't liners because they're feeding on my bait, there were liners in between here and my bait, you know, and I think they're probably moving along this margin um, because behind that island there, there's uh, a bit of a holding area, apparently. I spoke to another guy this morning and he said that they really like it in there and I did see a couple yesterday evening coming along here, so I reckon that's what they're doing from there to there. Um, so, I've been tipped off about another spot which I did kind of get tipped off about last night, but I didn't end up fishing it because I was, yeah, I was, I was on the wrong spot basically. I had a little lead around the area that I thought he was talking about and it was quite choddy and weedy and just didn't feel like it got fed on. But someone else came around this morning and went, no, you want to be in that little hole? So I had a little flick in there and yeah, it's really clear and really gravelly. And um, like I say, it's on the edge of that little snaggy holding area. So I reckon if I had a rod in there tonight, one to the left and one out in the open water, I would be confident of getting a bite. But you can't talk the talk if you're not going to walk the walk. So let's see how the afternoon pans out. Um, I'll probably get over and see Ollie at some point. He's gone over to the Mets, sorry, he's gone over to Thorny Weir um, to fish that margin because it seems like best chance of a, a bite, really. You know, it seems like a good holding area. Um, where the fish are constantly or regularly going to be visiting. So I have all the faith that he's going to get one out of there. Let's hope it's that big 40 pound common. <laughs> Go on, Ollie. Okay, so my last bits of camera, I apologise, it was a little bit doom and gloom, wasn't it? But the buzz is back on. <laughs> it don't take a lot in Morgan's world, does it? Um, so yeah, I've just walked up the pathway to look down on the area where I see that activity yesterday and where we'd seen a little bit of bubbling yesterday morning when we'd done our first lap and stood there for a minute or so and two 30 pounders just drifted in quite slowly big ones as well like good 30s um, and they were literally about a rod length maybe a rod length and a half from where i've got a large solid bag well, a medium sized solid bag um, which has got you know a good couple of handfuls of maggots in it a little bit of crumb it's going to stand out like a sore thumb but i think you know that's why that Maga liner sort of tactic works so well, in my opinion. It grabs their attention, like, what's that? They realise what it is, and uh, they want to eat every maggot that's in that bag. So, I'm hoping that's what's going to happen here. Aside from that, there's not much out there. I'll put um, probably about a handful or so of casters with a catapult, just sort of spread them over that area last night, just as it was getting dark. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty confident that we have got an opportunity here. It's warming up a bit as well. That's what I said before, you know, I'm sure once it gets warmer, they're gonna to wanna to get into that shallow area. There's obviously um, an abundance of naturals there that they want at the moment. So I'm sure they're gonna come back for them. Um, yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> Right, it's now one o'clock, still here. Um, just popped up there to have another little look. Obviously, I need to be on my rods, but 
temptation it's hard to resist um, it's not that far but yeah I haven't been staying up there long but yeah I've been up there I don't know two or three times now in the last couple of hours and every time I've seen fish the last time I saw four fish and they definitely looked like they were feeding um, sort of heading down you know tails up and four fish that means there's quite a lot of competition for food out there which is obviously the ideal scenario <sighs> I think I've got to just sit on my hands here it's definitely a good chance <sighs> feeling the pressure here I tell you um, yeah it's going to tip down tonight and in the morning and I really can't be driving to Wales with a stinking wet car so uh, yeah I'm gonna give it until last knockings I reckon um, just because you know they were feeding out here last night until it got dark so yeah if we give it to about six I mean I'm gonna hit the worst of the traffic but at least I'll get home with dry kit and a dry car and I won't get a, an earful tomorrow <laughs> or the next day on the way to Wales <laughs> Ollie's still seen fish around there, so I'm expecting a call from him any minute to say he's caught one. Um, hopefully we catch one at exactly the same time and then obviously none of us have to reel in <laughs> to uh, go and take pictures of the other one. That's the ideal scenario. Come on universe, can we work with that? What you got? What you saying? Oh, come on. Well then Ollie, whilst I've been sitting here pulling my hair out, thinking there's going to be a chance you've been uh, you've had quite a busy day haven't you oh, I've been pulling my hair out too Joe yeah I've been dotting about um, trying to catch one I've ended up back in the snag um, where you caught your one first day I'd seen a couple in there yesterday but like it wasn't really it wasn't really doing it but I, I saw three or four different fish and a good one in there today and um, so I made the effort to, to try and get a rig in there which I did second attempt so I got one right tucked tight in and he was feeding in there uh, I spent three or four hours sat there, but no, nothing. Um, I've just found a load as well in one of the other snags down the bank. They're all sat there pretty torpid, chilling, not really up for feeding. Again, fished that for a little while. I had nothing last night on Lake Free. That was quiet. Um, You've had a proper good go, haven't you, mate? I've been dotting about, mate. Um, I think my best chance is that sort of half chance yesterday on Lake Free with that fish that swam up over the bait. But when that's the best chance that you've had, um, it's been slow going. Mm. It has been slow. Mm. Uh, I've loved it though. It's been a real challenge. Um, I almost wish I was staying another night with you, but it's gonna. It, the rain's coming in, isn't it? Um, yeah. And I've got stuff to do. It's her birthday, so real life takes uh, takes priority. I'm a glutton for punishment. Um... Oh, mate, I really hope you get one because. Like we've both really tried, and I know you've been close. Um, I just feel like there's half a chance out here, so I'm gonna yeah stick it out and uh, fair play, Joe. Get going probably about ten in the morning. But yeah, what a cracking place. I mean, I often get asked. I'm sure you do as well on social media. You know, can you recommend a good dating lake? And you know, all the obvious ones from what I can gather are always stupidly busy. And we've been here this week. I mean, this is a, a premier day ticket venue with top class fishing and top class fish. And that lake next door has been actually relatively quiet, hasn't it? Well, and, and this one, I think this is on a day ticket as well, isn't it, the Mets? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And it's like, honestly, some of the swims, you wouldn't see another angler, would you? It's like a little mini rainbow. That's it, yeah. Um, on this one, you've got your own, you know, plenty of swims where you've yeah, got a massive chunk not, of water. Yeah, you're certainly not, not sort of having conflict with other anglers, are you? No. Uh, if you wanted to just sort of tuck yourself away, rather than going to your typical kind of, you know, uh, Oxford-style day ticket venue where you're corridor fishing and there's mm. just, like, vans and bivvies everywhere, then this is a, a lovely place to be and, you know, it's sort of place where you could really kind of hone your craft as well, isn't it? You know, you're oh, going to yeah. learn a lot fishing here, aren't you? That's right. It's not easy. It isn't easy. You know, it's been a tough ask for us to try and get one. You, you took... <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, it's not easy. You you took your opportunity, but otherwise it's actually been quite difficult, hasn't it, on all, all the lakes? Mm. I mean, this time of year is particularly harder nowadays, isn't it? You know, you kind of go through this spell. Um, there's an abundance of natural there for them, isn't it? They've been hammered all year, they've seen everything, and the, the, the feeding spells don't seem as prolonged, do they? No, I mean, I've noticed, like, I think a lot of the bites have been at, at night as well, or in the hours of darkness. Your one was right at last light, but that was kind of 
um, a snag fishing situation, yeah, but all the open water bites have been in the dark um, on Thorny Weir anyway. So yeah, um, I don't know. Yeah, it's been it's been tough, but it, I've enjoyed it, it. It's been good to go out fishing with you, Joe. It's been way too long since we fished together. Always, yeah, always a pleasure, never a chore, mate. Well, I mean, considering now we're getting towards the back end of October, we've actually got some relatively mild and good looking conditions in the next couple of weeks. So potentially we might try and get out again. Why not? Yeah, I've got a little bit of time to fish yeah. after, after her birthday. So <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it'd be nice to see you again and we'll try and settle the score. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, let's uh, keep in touch and you know, we'll keep, keep a little uh, eye on this place as well. We can speak to Dave, can't we? And um, obviously if it's not fishing, then maybe we'll venture somewhere else. Yep. Um, but yeah, it would be nice to come and uh, try and like you say, settle the score. Settle the score, yeah. yeah. Well, hopefully you get one tonight, mate. Fingers, Fingers crossed. crossed. Let me know, yeah. Send me a text. Sweet. Top Sweet. man. Cheers, nice Ollie. Enjoy. Have a good uh, time in Cornwall. Oi, oi. Look at him for an absolute peach of a carp. Mega linear. Really long. Probably somewhere around the mid-20 mark. 24, 25, I reckon. 10.30 at night. I've been waiting for that rod to go all day long anticipating it in the end gave up hope and uh yeah it was just settling down for the night and it's gone ripped round to the left managed to steer it away from the snags and we have got ourselves a lovely Metz Lake mirror and Joey's over the moon and I've got my buzz on now and I so you know what that means don't you there's been a couple of fish showing out here and potentially some good fish as well because I did see some good ones today down to the left but we came here on a mission didn't we and the mission must be completed so I've packed up my gear and I just got to get the last two rods in and uh, we're going to get down to Lake Free a couple of rods and a little margin spot that I baited yesterday and then hopefully it gets out before it rains because the rain is on its way and it's going to tip down so uh, yeah See if we can go and nick one out of there before I've got to leave. It's a shame though, because I reckon there's definitely a chance of another bite out of here, but man on a mission, it can be done. Let's do this. Guten Morgen. Um, pretty tired, as you can imagine. I think it was about one o'clock before I was finally settled around here last night. Um, I just dropped two rods on a little margin spot that I'd baited the day before. Um, there didn't seem to be many margin spots in here, but this one's quite deep. Um, it's sort of weed on the ledge, and then yeah, it's quite a nice big clear area, to be honest with you, I thought. I thought that might be the one, but it wasn't. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll get up at first light anyway and look for some bubblers and hopefully get a rod on a bubbler or two. And unfortunately, I turned my alarm off and woke up at eight o'clock, um, but it's still you know, quite a carpy old morning. The drizzle's just stopped. Um, it's very calm out there. I've seen two shows, so I moved one rod and then put a third rod out as well, um, just bags of maggots out into, uh, into the pond where they showed, it felt quite deep. Um, one of them got on the right drop, one of them sort of fell for a little bit of weed as on its way down, but should be fishing. Um, but yeah, I can only really give it another hour or two, well, hour and a half really, max. And then I've got to get out of here because I've got a big weekend ahead. I've got to drive down to the valleys in Wales. <laughs> uh, well, actually on the coast. But yeah, that'll be nice, nice weekend with my uh, lovely little lady. Go and see some of the sights in Wales. Um, I love that coastland, you know, like sort of Devon, Cornwall, Wales. It's, it just looks so nice, doesn't it? And uh, yeah, obviously, hopefully we'll get a sunset or two over the ocean. And uh, yeah, I'll be out again next week. But it's not over here yet. This mission still could be completed. One of these rods could rattle off at any second and we'd be job done. Job a knock. <laughs> uh, right, coffee. Coffee. 
Okay, whilst I'm sitting in the old last chance saloon bar, I thought I'd quickly just show you the rigs that I caught the fish on this session. I quite often get people ask if I don't mention it. Um, first of all, we've got like the maggot set up. Now, I do love using maggots in the winter, uh, or any time of year if I can get away with them actually, because they're absolutely deadly. Um, God, talk about cost of living. I bought a pint from my tackle shop a week or so, my local tackle shop, should I say, a week or so ago. Four pounds a pint. Unbelievable. Um, but if you go on the Willy's Worms website, you can actually get like, um, I think they're like five day old maggots or something like that. And they do them a lot cheaper as well. So um, yeah, you can get like half a gallon, a lot cheaper than you'd get it anywhere else. Um, and I think they even do single pints, the older ones that are a bit cheaper as well. And when you get them, you might think, oh, they look a bit dead and suffocate, you know, like they've been suffocated basically for however long they've been in transit for. Um, but if you just put them in a bucket and give them air, then they'll come back to life. <laughs> and I personally don't really think it matters too much whether they're super fresh or they're old, or even if they've been frozen and they're dead, you know, they still absolutely love them. Um, the other thing I'd just say about maggots is personally, I've never done that well putting loads out. You get a lot of people, um, just, you know, just put tons and tons out and then kill the fishing for everyone else. And then they end up getting banned. So yeah, my recommendation is to use them in smaller amounts, um, either just a small amount in your mix or just some in a bag. You know, I've been using solid bags with maggots and a little bit of ground bait at either end. Um, and you get a really nice little presentation with just enough for a bite. So anyway, um, sometimes I'll use my usual kind of solid bag rig, um, but sometimes if, the, if I think the fish are being a bit finicky, then I step down and I step down, I say step down, it's not exactly fining down, um, but I use like a Magaliner setup, and this is kind of my own version of the Magaliner. Basically, there's a little bit of shrink tube on there, and then I just thread about eight maggots onto a size four wide gate barbless, and then I just put one of the hook beads on just to secure them into place so they're not gonna slip around the bend. And as you can see, it's kind of all as one, you know? Um, there's not a separate bait and a separate hook. So I think that it just goes in a lot easier um, and, you know, it just nails them. You know, it's very light sucks up into their mouth super easy and then I've got that super short hook link which as soon as that tightens up to that lead when it goes in their mouth bang it pricks them they shake their head and they're nailed it is an absolutely deadly setup this if you use this in combination with a big bag either like a sock or a solid bag this is deadly I promise you, I've caught a lot of big fish on this and a lot of bonus carp on days when other fish weren't getting caught. So I highly recommend you giving this a go. Now the other one, last night, I was fishing over probably about five, six inches of silkweed, I'd say. And the first night I put a bag out there, um, I just used it with the Magaliner style, but I was a bit worried that that might be sitting in the silkweed and obviously the hook can get into the silkweed and maybe not go in the fish's mouth. So I changed that up yesterday and just put a little pop-up on there, real short pop-up, once again, size four, wide gate barbless, little bit of shrink tube, um, two different reasons for that. One, as you can see, it kind of helps the bait sort of spin round on its axis. And secondly, when you have to use barbless hooks like you do over here, that shrink tube helps to keep the hook in place once it's in. Um, as you imagine, you know, if that's hooked into the flesh, then that shrink tube is sort of pushing against the lip and holding the hook in place. And it makes it a lot trickier for them to just shake it out, which they quite often do. So once again, combining that with a super short hook link inside a solid bag, so it's landing in that silkweed and sitting up proud um, perfect position to, to absolutely nail them, you know. And obviously, yeah, that done the business last night. So, uh, yeah, as a little insight into the rigs I've used for this session. Obviously, I have used others, um, but they're the two that I've caught on. Um, tidy little rigs that will catch you a lot of fish. Like, I keep talking about it all the time, but that short hook link is everything, you know. If the fish are super tricky and super, like, shy with rigs, that is one of the hardest things for them to deal with and I just hardly ever see anyone using hook links that short. You know, I think everyone's scared to have it that close to the lead, but 
fish aren't scared of the lead, are they? You know. Um, so yeah, give it a go if you haven't before, and uh, hopefully we'll catch a few fish in it. Well, it's nearly 11 o'clock. I really should have been out of here by now, but it's been drizzling quite hard, so I didn't want to get all my gear wet. Um, and there's been a few fish. Well, about half hour ago, there's three fish, maybe four actually, um, ripping it up on that little plateau out there. You probably can't see it, but yeah, there's a, a light area out there. It's like a big hump. Um, and Ollie had fished on that a couple of days ago and the fish sort of approached his bait and then just spooked. But obviously this morning, different type of weather and yeah, they were absolutely tearing it up out there. So I was like waiting for an opportunity to get a, a rig out. Um, and they did sort of drift away a little bit in the end and I flicked it out there, but I still saw one spook. So um, yeah, it's probably put them on edge a little bit. But uh, we'll give it another half hour because uh, you never know. And it'll be a proper buzz to be able to fluke one out of here. Lastminute.com, lastminute.joe.uk. Um, but yeah, if you don't hear from me again, it probably means that I didn't have one. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, Joe. We're back for another go. We're back. Joe wasn't feeling where he was fishing. I fancied another crack at it, so we're back for another 24 hours. Try and catch one from, well, we're going to try and catch one from all three again. We are, mate. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think I'll jump on Lake Three just obviously because I didn't catch one out there last time. And there's something special about that place. I really quite enjoyed yeah. it, the feel of it. When you phoned me up and said, like, they're all over your spot the following morning, I kicked myself, man. I was like, I really should have stayed. They were well cagey on that bar, though. I, I reckon that's sort of the spot that everyone fishes and they, they treat it with caution. Mm. But, like, there's a couple of other really nice looking spots in there when, when the light was good. Um, and I did see him going over them last week as well. So. Oh, well in with a shout getting one. It's actually nicer than it was last week. We've got a warmer wind. Last week we had easterly, so now we've got a southwesterly. It's like 18 degrees on boy. Crazy and warm, isn't it? It's November in a few days. Crazy, but yeah, we're going to have another go. Um, hopefully Joe won't show me up again this time. <laughs> and that's a team effort, man. It'd be nice to get another one. Uh, it'd be nice to sort of complete the free lake challenge you ever catch one, wouldn't it? Mate, I've got faith that we can do this. I think 24 we can. hours, all three? I think we can. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of good swims for you, aren't there? So that's a good start. Yeah. I think I'll plonk myself in that roll box, even if I just sit there for until this time tomorrow. It's got to be worth a shout, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, you've got the tools for got the, the tools. job. Yeah, mate, he was in there last week, didn't have, a, didn't have a pole. He did lose one and land a couple, didn't he? But I think he would have done better if he'd uh, been a bit stealthier. But. Sweet, right, well, let's go and I'm talking see if we can up do now, it. Like. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's go. Go, go, go. I've got the luxury of a power porter for the first time in my life. Look at that all loaded yeah, up, ready on, to yeah. go. <laughs> Do you know what, right? I've been sitting by a lake the last 48 hours, seeing nothing, just camping, with no buzz whatsoever. And I've been here five minutes and I'm already like a little school kid. Um, so we come up to Lake Free. And basically, that margin spot I was fishing last week, I put a little bit of bait into. There's, there was three fish there when I first arrived. Um, and I, as soon as I walked in, I saw them, and I backed out as quickly as I could because I didn't want to spook them. And then Ollie had a little look, and he saw a couple in there as well. Um, he said, I don't know how you're going to get a rig in without spooking them, so yeah, I might have to wait for them to just shift off a little bit. Maybe I'll just sprinkle a couple of little maggots on their head. Um, but yeah, whether they're feeding or not, I don't know. But if I can get a maggot liner and a bag of maggots down onto that spot, then I'm pretty sure I should be in with a good chance. Weather's bang on, wind's trickling into this bank. Just got to be as stealthy as I can. And hopefully, we can try and nab a quick bite. <sighs> Buzzing. Right, come on, let's get this bag out of there. Oh, it's still down there. Oh, it's a good fish, that one. God, man, I'll probably for even down there. Right on the edge of that weed, maybe even in the weed. Still bubbles coming up. I need to get that rig in. Just get a few 
two maggots, five maggots. Oh, this is such a prime opportunity, I really don't want to mess it up. They look so happy there feeding. I think this could be my opportunity. I think they've just moved around. Whew. That's proper squeaky bum stuff that was. It's literally just flicking the odd little maggot on their head, trying to get them to move off. And at first they were just eating them, um, but then they, they did just move out. So it gave me an opportunity to just lower that bag in place in perfect position. Um, surely they can't say no to a bag of maggots. Come on, proper, like, I feel like a kid in a sweet shop. <laughs> Buzzing like a pylon. I don't even want to put a buzzer on it because I don't want to risk making the noise, you know, pushing the bank stick into the gravel. So I'm just going to leave it there for now and uh, sit back. My fingers crossed. Yo, that's mega, isn't it? That's mega, Joe. That's mega. Like, I was just putting my third rod out and he disappeared. And uh, by the time I've got over here, he's got one. How long did that take? 10 minutes? Well, that long was it? I was paranoid that that bag of maggots might have spooked him, but. Yeah, you were just saying, weren't you? Like, you regretted putting a whole bag out, but it done the trick, mate. Where they were feeding. That is a mega one. It really is, isn't it? Right. Lovely scales. Even the uh, dorsal's got a hell of a bit of character to it, look, make a shape. And those little white tips on his tail. Buzzing with that one. That is a proper Cone Valley special one for me. Chuffed to bits. In fact, the other side's so cool. I'm gonna have to give you a quick sample of that as well. Wow, yep, look at them scales. Three big ones above the linear line there. Awesome creature, fought like a demon. Right, no need to keep him out any longer. Let's get him back. Thank you, Mr. Carp. <laughs> uh, top angling there, Joe. Oh, mate, I'm buzzing with that. Really well done, mate. <laughs> I lose my head a bit sometimes, you know, that's, you know, like, <laughs> that's, that's how it should be, isn't it? Absolutely. You know? The buzz. I think even just sat, in, sat by the lake for two days, you know, on a different water, having nothing, nothing going on, you know, it just made this e even more of a buzz. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Special carp, that one. Thank you very much. That's that Luego Amigo. <sighs> That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about, mate. <laughs> Wicked. Well done, brother. Cheers, mate. Top man. How are you feeling, Ollie? What are you thinking? Well, here I find myself sat in what is one of the going swims. It feels a bit strange, to be honest, Joe. It's not really, not really a bit of me. I've come here without seeing fish in here and I've got them out in the obvious spots and I feel really happy with where I'm fishing. But yeah, I would prefer to do what you did. That was a fantastic bit of angling, mate. I was definitely chucked a bone from the universe there. Yeah, yeah. No, well done, mate. You, you know, find them. You know, you, you got here just a bit before me, didn't you? Come over and had a look. I'd baited that spot as well last week when I left because I fished it that night and I just felt like I should have had one out of there that night, really. But well, it's obviously not an area they visit at night, maybe. Um, 
but yeah, buzzing to have had that one. Um, but yeah, it's like you say, it's not your style, sitting it out in a known swim and you haven't actually seen anything up here, have you? Well, don't get me wrong, it's a, like a wicked swim, right? but there's loads of wicked swims on this lake, isn't there? Uh, it's a, a nice, deep, snaggy corner. They obviously spend a lot of time in here. I've been round and sort of just dropped a lead in on the far side to where I'm fishing to, and it's hard and it's deep, you know, it's perfect for a bite if they're here. It's surprising, isn't it? Because I had a flick around in the swim next door last week and you hardly got a drop anywhere. It was ridiculously shallow. So, and also we've, we can see the bottom out here, can't we? So it's funny, it seems to be deep right in the edge. So it and then it shelf. comes up like, yeah, yeah. Almost like the one behind us as well. You know, it's deep right in your margin and then it seems to shallow up towards those plateaus. And mm. Well, you can see why they would like this area or why they do like this area. Um, but yeah, like you say, it's just a bit of a gamble, isn't it? To, uh, what do we do? I mean, now you've caught one from there, what do you want to do? Well, I'm happy to just... Should we have a social tonight or should we try and find an opportunity on Thorny? I don't <sighs> know, know, like to potentially give up this swim, which... Yeah, I mean, no, I think personally, I think, you know, there's, there's probably a good chance of a bite out of it. It's not the sort of swim that you're going to drop in and have bite straight away, is it? No. Um, and it is the sort of area that the fish are going to kind of be visiting, isn't it? So even though they're not necessarily here now, not necessarily here now, um, you know, they could be during the night, couldn't they? And the way you fish, just fishing for a bite, it only takes one fish to drop down and you've got a very chance, good chance of hooking them, haven't you? Yeah. I mean, the joy of the pole, though, is that I can now reel these in and go for a walk if I want to and not feel like I've really compromised myself. I know we were talking about it earlier, weren't you? Sometimes you sit on rods because you don't want to have to recast them mm. because it's, you know, it's, it can be really detrimental to your chance of a bite, but I think, you know, just shipping and tipping it out there again before dusk won't hurt my chances at all. So I don't know about you, but I'm up for maybe a little walk anyway. Okay, Even mate. if we decide to stay put for the night. Yeah. I'd like to rule out the other areas. It might be that we stumble across something obvious. And... Yeah, well, last week I did, didn't I? You know, yeah. I walked down there on this lake and there was fish ripping up a, a sort of shallow area. Um, so, yeah, it only, it only takes to fall on one of them little... And without like searching every nook and cranny, our previous experience from last week, you know, you maybe know that there's one or two areas that are worth checking. It's certainly worth checking that snag on Thorny if there's fish in there. You know, at least we know that if this is a blank night tonight in here, could drop in there again potentially for the day. I mean, it did feel like it was more of a daytime area anyway, didn't it? They weren't really there first thing in the morning, were they? No, no, I think they drift in there as the day goes on. And as the pressure builds, you know, out in the lake, it's somewhere where they'll go to escape maybe the, the flying leads and the, the steaming ships. Yeah, so I mean, looking how many vans there were in the car park for Fawney tonight, I think the only kind of option else other than here is going to be kind of in that area that I fished last week. You know, there was the two swims either side of that mm -hmm. snag. That, mm -hmm. that could be one, but apart from that, I just, I don't know. Well, do you know what? I think the best chance of the bite looks on three where you still yeah, are. I yeah. mean, they, they were still there after you had that fish in the net. There was three or four fish just sat 10 yards to the left. After that crazy battle, I was yeah. really surprised to see that. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I would be happy if you're happy sitting in here for the night, which I think you have got a very good chance of a bite. Then obviously I'm more than happy to sit on there for a night as well, because I've seen some really cool looking carp in Mate, there. Mate, when you told me that they were there, I crept down and sort of just poked my head round and there was one decent fish sat over the spot and then another like really cool like black and white koi type thing came in Wicked. with like a you know real like an odden you know yeah so they, there's obviously some really like interesting fish in that lake well, I, I showed you the video of the one birdie filmed in there didn't i oh the big one yeah yeah yeah. and there's Mate, a chance of a that, chance of a giant like that, i mean i don't know whether it's still in there i don't know whether anyone's spotted it for quite a few years but i know birdie fished it a fair bit and he only saw it three times in all the time he fished it so yeah you know it obviously doesn't give itself away too much and it doesn't get a huge amount of pressure so you don't know I'm, I'm living on the hope that you know the myth lives on but what a carp if that one is still in there that would uh, blow a lot of people's minds yeah well you never know I might um, I might come and punish you on there tomorrow as well if, it's, <laughs> if, it, if nothing's happened but I feel like maybe I should just take one for the team sit it out in this one yeah i think you're gonna have one out of here tonight 
whether I have one out of there tonight or not, I don't know. What was that? So it's uh, black. I don't know if that was a coat or a roller. And then, if that was a shower, then... I think first thing in the morning, nice we can get over to Forney and uh, attempt to try and find an opportunity on there in the daytime. It's going to be Friday, so, I mean, it's already busy, so might be pushing our luck, but them little corners that you like, that's often... Uh... It's just about nicking a bike, Joe, you know, and it can be done really quickly. As you've, like, you've shown last week and this week, you know, both of them bites, well, this one come really quickly, 10 minutes, but, I mean, how long did we wait for the one in the in the snag? Yeah, it was a good few hours, wasn't it? Three, in the four, end. five yeah. hours, but, yeah, you know, we didn't have to sit in a swim for hours and hours, did we, to, to get a bite? Tell you what, there's some decent rings coming out from there. Yeah, it did sound a bit. I wonder if that was a fish. Yeah. Well, if it is, it's a good sign. Definitely, sweet. All right, so we, um, so we just bite the bullet and stick it out here, then? Yeah, I reckon so. Cool. Right, well, I'm going to get on. myself sorted then, because yeah. uh, at the moment I've got all my gear on the barra. <laughs> yeah, well, you're the same, aren't you? Um, just your rods are out, so yeah, I'll get myself sorted and uh, have see a you for a coffee in a, a bit. Yeah. Yeah. All right, mate. Nice Sweet. So you're looking for your twisters? Mm. Oh, that's appropriate, isn't it? Twist or stick? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not very well organised. Uh, <laughs> there we go. We made another roll of the dice and we're back on Forney. A very busy Forney. We found some fish, haven't we, Joe? Yeah, I mean, we've done a full lap. Yeah, down the channel, um, there were a few fish, weren't there? Sort of getting away from the pressure, I think. Um, but both of us sort of looked at them and uh, Angley's problem solving, isn't it? Problem one's finding them, problem two is catching them. And to me, that looked like an unsolvable problem. They looked um, uncomfortable. They didn't look like they were happy carp. No, they looked like they they were there to avoid all the pressure around this main lake. Um, quite often you get that this time of year, don't you? They're just sort of milling about really slowly. And we even saw some in the snags, didn't we? A bit further up this bank to our left. Yeah. And they were feeding, but they were feeding like so slow and cautiously, you know, and that's underneath a canopy that no one can get to them. Um, so, you know, that just says it all really, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a tricky proposition, isn't it, mate? But um, Plus, if it done, apparently someone had three out of that channel last night, so that's going to put them on edge a bit as well, if they're yeah, for sure. the ones that are resident up there. So, yeah, it is literally last roll of the dice, uh, back in the snag where you caught your first one uh, last week. And there's a couple of fish in there. I ended up fishing it again last week as well because it was like it's obviously a regular haunt of theirs. Um, and yeah, I couldn't get them. Um, well, I couldn't get the rigs tight enough because the the wind was like really smashing in. And although I could get the pole to it, I didn't really have a great deal of control. Whereas now I can be a little bit more accurate and get it right in there um, and see what happens. There's a couple of fish in there. We'll throw a few maggots over the top, see if we can stir them up a little bit, and I'll put a little bag of maggots, small something, I haven't quite decided, I'm making a rig now, I'll work out something uh, to put out there. Um, and yeah, fingers crossed, try and nick a bite. Last, last chance saloon, I mean, we're going to have something to eat, have a cup of coffee. Yeah, I'll knock us up a bit of brekkie. Lovely, and uh, yeah, that'll be it, off back to the real world. <laughs> That's been fun though. Well, they're definitely back, mate, aren't they? Yeah, that water's really coloured up. I've just dropped it again, um, a touch closer, <laughs> further into the belly of the beast. Fishing locked up. Oh, got one. 
What happened there? I had a bite while I was... You got one on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I just watched Ollie drop that bait. I walked around there and there's two fish there just as he dropped it, you know. Obviously, I couldn't tell him not to. So he literally dropped it on their heads and... Look, he's out. He's just in the weed. I just felt it. I felt the line pulling tight in my hands as I was getting... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh man. I was just about to say, come on, oh, let's rev this up. We've got fish in the zone. This is what we're after. And Do you know what? I so nearly reeled that in as well, Joe, because the pole was siding up the line, wasn't it? And I wasn't really sure whether I'd move the rig. Do you know what? I was, <laughs> I'm glad I was holding the line because it gave me the, actually the opportunity to, to react <laughs> and pull it straight out. Yeah, that's it. You didn't, you didn't know what I was doing, did you? <laughs> <laughs> Running up the pub. Uh, brilliant. It's out now, man. Brilliant. Oh, yes. Well done, mate. Common. Hopefully it's that big common. There's a big dark one in there. Well, this is what it is all about. Just rolled in that dice, Joe. Mega busy lake, you know, most people who are turning up here are turning up and looking for a swim they can put three rods out in and fill it in and wait for a, a haul, which at this time of year you're not really going to get, are you mate? You're literally scratching for a bite mate, honestly, which is what we've been doing. Uh, you did really well to make one yesterday straight away, I've had to wait a little bit longer for my one, but we've made it happen. I don't think it's a big one. There was one small common down there, typically. I think that's him. Uh, who cares, eh? Got the buzz. You know what? It wouldn't surprise me if they carry on feeding down there. There was a few. Got him out quickly as well, yeah. didn't you? Oh, sometimes luck's just on your side, man. Jeez. Well, you put the effort in, mate. Last time, running around everywhere and trying to get something going. and Well, get it in the net first, eh? <laughs> Uh, do you know what? Even if it fell off, Joe, sometimes it's... Um, Don't say that. Shush. Nah. <laughs> and it's not all about the bite, but like, this was problem solving, wasn't it? Yeah, £20 common. Lovely. Oh, yeah. oh that's a nice one, mate. Yeah. It's in the net. Oi, oi. <laughs> yes, Joe. Do you know what? It's been a wicked trip. I'd have been happy going home by it, but yeah, it's always nice to nick one, isn't it, mate? Well done, mate. That is a proper result. He's not a bad one, mate. No, it's a good one. Nice fish as well. Lovely. Yeehaw! it finally well I tell you what that was kind of last chance saloon wasn't it but I'm really pleased for the next one and what a lovely carp as well bit of a character perfect mouth lovely lovely fish it's an absolute cracker that mate mega conditioned carp yes. and uh, yeah nice end to a thoroughly enjoyable couple of trips it has been mate yeah just 24 hours this time and a bite each put the work in and you got got the reward there mate so uh, yeah mega well done cheers joke what a carp yeehaw yeehaw brother
The little change and the biggest difference that's ever made in my carp fishing career was when Dennis Davies and Colin Swaden uh, came to Longfield, which is now known as Fox Pool. Uh, before Longfield, it was known as Staines. Then became Longfield, then became Fox Pool. And um, I was always on fish there, just like back in the day when uh, down in the Kent boys, which were Dennis and Colin, they, they're used to it in Twitches. Anyway, they were catching fish out, out of Longfield, and I wasn't. And I thought, they're new on the, on the lake. How comes I'm not catching? I'm, so I'm sure I'm getting line bites, but they weren't line bites. They were takes. And one night they felt a little bit sorry for me, so they come round and said, look, we're going to show you something, but you can't tell anybody. And they showed me the air rig. And as soon as I see it, I thought, wow. I know straight away what it's going to do. Right, that's not the end of the story. So I've got it. Bang, I'm now catching fish. But I'm willing to tell anybody. And Vic Gillings was a very close friend of mine at the time. And uh, June the 16th, June the 15th, we're all there. But me, I'm the only one without my hooks in, in, in the uh, in the butt rings. They're ready to cast out at 12 o'clock that night. But no one said a word. My rods were all hanging up uh, on the bivvy with the baits inside. And we all gone round to each other swim for a cup of tea. No one said anything about my rods being the way they were, so I got away with it. So far, so good. So, uh, bang, I went to a fish during the 16th, next day. Nice 25 pound, or 26 pound common, I think it was. And uh, I played the fish in, just like a normal. And no one was taking any notice, and I could see the bait wandering around on the outside of the moment. I didn't say nothing, I just, and as I netted, I just went down and unhooked it in the net, like I, 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 I've often done anyway, and I squashed the bait off the hair and brought it back up. Put, put the, 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 the lead in the, in the bivvy, no one took any notice of that, that's a normal thing. Got the fish out, weighed it all up, photographed it, put it back. So the usual thing is to make a cup of tea. So I thought, I can't not ask them for a cup of tea, they'll know something ain't right. So I made a cup of tea. While they're, while, while they're having a cup of tea, I'll put the old hair rig back on, frost, frost, frost. There's about four, four or five of them standing there. And uh, so I've come out, all nonchalant, like, you know, I've got the right cast out. Vic's on, oi, that bait weren't on. I said, what do you mean it weren't on? Oh, it fell off then. He said, really? And of course he was Vic Gillings. I couldn't say no. And of course that's when it, the secret got out at Longfield that I had the hair rig. And he, he honestly said, that bait word on the hook. I thought, how did you see that? So that was a disaster for me. Were they all on it straight away? Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. I mean, Vic, as soon as they saw it, I, was, and I had to tell them straight, like, I said, well, that's what I've been shown by Dennis and Collins, Dennis Davis and Collins Wade, and, and that's why I've been on the fish straight away. And, and after that, we was all catching quite regular. So they were the big hits in, in carp fishing. But since I've been back, Obviously, things which I, I can't go into now because basically I'm still learning, but things have masqueraded, not head above anything I know, but waist above anything I ever know, and I'm still learning now. I mean, I've got my rod strapped down. I've got I'm, I'm using uh, rigs that I've not even seen before. I'm, how do you do this? How do you do that? And as you just pointed out yourself, you've got that on wrong, and that's probably why I've just lost that fish a little while ago. <laughs> but I'm still going to get plenty of chances. Right, there's no doubt whatsoever in my mind that the biggest edge I've been able to give myself over the years is having super sharp hook points. Be it that if I sharpen them myself with a little file um, or the Nash uh, point doctor, or I'm just using like a Kamakura straight out of the pack. Obviously the Kamakuras are super sharp. Um, in some instances, they're actually too sharp. You know, if I'm fishing over a lot of gravel or there's mussels and things, then I actually tend to sharpen my points myself and just leave the tip so they're not quite as fine. And, and that way I find that, you know, you get more longevity out of them in those sort of waters. But one thing that you will notice when you start sharpening hooks or using Kamakuras is that the sharpened bit will become rusty. Now, in the past, people have used like sort of Vaseline type products um, to protect those points from the rust. Um, but recently, someone called Darren Davison, who's a guy I've met up at St. Ives in the last couple of years, a uh, very good angler, um, very experienced, and he catches a hell of a lot of fish. Well, he's come up with a product which will protect your hook points from rust. Um, 
I wanted to use it for a few months before I recommended it to you guys and I have been. Um, I've taken it to a variety of waters because what you find is some waters seem to rush hook points a lot faster than others um, but this seems to do the job wherever I go. So it's known as ZR which stands for zero rust. It's just £10 a bottle um, and it will last a stupidly long time um, unless you're fishing you know, like five nights a week, then this is going to last you probably one or two seasons. Um, you only have to apply it once to the hook. And what's great about it is it's super fine. So it literally absorbs into that metal and protects it rather than, you know, the kind of Vaseline type ones. If I hook my hook into my solid bag, which I do when I'm using them, obviously any of that Vaseline stuff is going to rub off of it and the same when you're using mesh bags you know and you're hooking them through it it's just rubbing that off and not protecting the point whereas this stuff you apply it once and that is it it soaks into that uh, metal and protects it 100 percent now first thing i thought when i smelt this stuff was oh my god that smells horrendous do i really want to be putting that on my hook well <laughs> After seeing everyone else's results, it soon became clear that not only are they not worried about it, but potentially they are actually massively attracted to it. Um, there's been a hell of a lot of big fish caught over the last few months using this product, including uh, three 50 pounders. So um, yeah, there's no doubt in my mind that this stuff does not scare the fish off at all. And well actually it seems like they're attracted to it so yeah no harm in putting this on your hooks whatsoever as i say it's going to last ages and it only costs 10 pound a bottle so it's one of them products that every carp angler should have in their tackle box at the end of the day you know some places you want to be leaving them rigs out 24 or 48 hours potentially sometimes and you want to know that that hook point is still 100 percent perfectly sharp and uh, not rusty well this product is going to give you that peace of mind so yeah for just 10 pounds <sighs> you're buying yourself a huge, huge edge. Um, you can order it straight off the website. Um, but yeah, fair play, Darren. Well done, mate. I'm well impressed with this product and I shall continue to keep using it. You do have to just give it a quick little shake before you apply it. And that kind of activates it, if you like. And uh, yeah, awesome stuff. Get on their website, get yourself a bottle ASAP. Okay, so little story for you. Now, when I started this show, um, came up with the idea of doing a feature called Backwind. <clears throat> now, originally on the old Carp TV, we used to have one called The One That Got Away. What I thought is, we'll do a similar thing to that, but with a little lesson in it as well, you know, like look at what people would have done differently in that scenario, could they rewind the time and do it again? So, my little Backwind story involves Burfield. Now, when I worked for Corda, we were up at the Blue Pool doing some underwater fishing, underwater fishing, underwater filming even, and um, I got taken along as the runner, if you like. So I was popping up the shop, getting bits and pieces, um, cooking the food for the, the, the whole crew, and um, yeah, pottering about here and there. And whilst I was there, I was told that I was able to fish Burfield, so um, obviously I needed to be close to the blue pool and there was a few swims that backed on to Burfield um, from behind the blue pool. One of them was on the corner and it was just this amazing looking swim. Um, I had multiple islands out sort of to my left and my right, you know, which had channels in between them. And then in the distance, there was a, a gap between two islands. Um, which went into another section of the lake. And basically it was just an absolutely stunning swim to be in. So I thought, well, you know, I'm not gonna catch anything, but it'd be nice to camp here for the week with this lovely view. And then as I was setting up, one lumped out, about 70 yards out, a common sort of low 20s. I thought, blimey, like, it's fish in the area. I've actually got a chance here. Anyway, nothing happened for uh, about, I think it was about four or five nights. I can't remember the exact amount of days. Um, but anyway, one uh, morning when I woke up, I looked out and I could see a massive dorsal just the other side of that gap, which is about sort of 95 yards out, I think. And uh, it looked huge, the dorsal, but I didn't think, oh, that must be the Burfield Common. You know, I just thought, well, that's a big carp. I'm going to stick a rod out there tonight. So 
when I got back that evening from doing my chores, um, I smashed out a single pineapple out there just past the two islands. So it's just on the back of a little bar. Well, I didn't plumb it properly. Um, yeah, we'll come back to that in a bit. <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah, that night I woke up in the morning um, to a bite and you know, well, obviously, it was complete disbelief to start with. Um, but I jumped on the rod, bent into it, and it's just gone. <laughs> Bloody hell, it's a carp, it's definitely a carp. And then, choom, everything's come back. Everything apart from the hook. Um, basically, the hook had somehow cut the hook link um, right on the eye of the hook. So whether I'd whipped the knotless knot the wrong way or which, you know, is very unlikely because it's something I've always been conscious of. Um, or potentially it got cut on a muscle or a bar or something. But there's no way that hook link should have broke in that situation. And, uh, yeah, I was just left distraught, you know. It was only a few seconds it was on for, but, you know, when you just, oh, just, yeah, I was just gutted. I felt like all the blood had left my body, you know, like when you have a close car accident. So anyway, I was yeah, a bit disappointed, but I realised I'd overslept a bit. Four magpies there, surely I've got to catch one today. Go on, four magpies, yeehaw. Right, so yeah, <laughs> anyway, um, Danny come up to my swim just as I was getting my other rods in. And he's like, what are you doing, Joe? Like, you, you know, we started work two hours ago. Why aren't you here? I was like, oh, I'm sorry, mate, I'm sorry. I've, I, I've just lost one. And he's like, have you? I said, yeah, I've just like, lost one out there after seeing this big dorsal. And anyway, he's like, well, <laughs> not particularly sympathetic. Um, you know, like, come on, we need your help. So anyway, I got my rods in and uh, cracked on. So that was that. As far as I was concerned, I'd just lost a Burfield carp. Then quite a few years later, Daryl Peck called me, or he maybe just messaged me one day, actually, and he just said, you didn't tell me you lost a Burfield common. <laughs> I said, no, I didn't. I just lost a carp from Burfield. Um, he said, no, mate. He said, you need to read Nigel's book. Now, even to this day, I've not read Nigel Sharp's book. Um, sorry, Nigel. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so basically it transpired that Nigel had been fishing in, I think they call it the dog leg or something like that, um, this bay that... The common was coming into every day at that point, and he was seeing it each and every day, coming in there like clockwork, you know, and every time it come in, really calm, swimming around, doing what it's doing, and then leaving again. Well, oh, ah, oh, it's a coot. Oh, I thought that was in four magpies then, bringing me a bit of luck, but no, coot. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, basically, um, the morning that I'd lost the fish, their big common, the Burfield common, had come into that bay acting ridiculously, um, well, out of sorts, out of character. You know, it was actually headbutt in the bank by all accounts. So, um, sounds like there's a very good chance it had a size 8 wide gape in its lip, and that is why it was headbutt in the bank trying to remove it. So, uh, yeah, it looks like a very good chance that I lost the Burfield common. Um, in a week's fishing on a single pineapple yellow wanged out there but yeah the back wind the hindsight type thing what would i do differently um well i mean really i probably should have plumbed that uh bar to realize that it was probably too shallow to be fishing over and secondly i shouldn't have really been fishing over it because you know there was two islands a 15 yard gap in between them um i mean i was literally just on the back of it so potentially had i have you know just picked out that rod and run backwards maybe i might have got that fish over the bar <coughs> excuse me but yeah it wasn't to be um and I feel bad because, you know, by doing what I'd done, I actually ended up ruining Nigel, ruining Nigel Sharp's spring on there and probably being the reason why it took him another year to actually catch that fish. So apologies, Nigel. Um, yeah, wasn't to be. 
Right, well, unfortunately, that's it for another month and indeed another year of Carp Angle. Before I sign off, obviously, I've got to say a massive thank you to everyone who supported the show throughout the year. Um, the show gets 50 to 100,000 views each month, or the, the channel does, yet it's only two to 300 people each month that actually make a contribution. So if you're one of the many thousands of people who've enjoyed the show over the year, you've had some information, inspiration and entertainment, um, then please, please consider a little Christmas tip towards the fund. Either it's five pound or you know a few quid, or you, know, you want to chuck in a chunk because you've had such good entertainment throughout the year, <laughs> no problem pressure whatsoever um, but yeah I do rely on your contributions to be able to keep this on YouTube obviously next year moving forward I may have to look at you know moving it onto a website just purely because it is a bit of a struggle each month but I'd much rather not have to do that and if just a small percentage of you guys uh, made a small contribution each month then I would be able to keep this show for you all to watch and for everyone to enjoy and benefit from um, this month We've got a few little prizes actually. We've got 10 bottles of the ZR. So basically anyone who contributes five pound or more will go into the draw. I appreciate these aren't huge uh, prizes, but you know, it's just a little bit of incentive. Well, not even incentive really, just another little way that I can thank you guys who do contribute. So we've got 10 bottles of that to give away. And then we've got uh, five sets of the corn. So five times four tubs, I believe, um, from Tails Up. So yeah, anyone who contributes five pound or more, um, to do that, you can just literally go onto PayPal using the carpangle at gmail.com, or if you click on the link in the information below this video, or the link on my Instagram page, then that'll take you straight to a PayPal page, which you don't even need a PayPal account for. You can do that simply by using a card. And it's also really easy to set up a monthly recurring payment, should you wish to. Massive, massive thank you to you all. I wish you all an uh, amazing Christmas and a very merry or messy new year. And hopefully 2023 is going to be a fantastic year for us all. Much love, everyone. Have a great Christmas. And uh, yeah, don't drink too much. <laughs>